What is happening? Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. Put on your holy hats for this one. Here are the top 10 terrifying creatures from the Bible that will haunt your dreams. Number 10. Dragons. Dragons have been part of mythology for a while, but they've also been a part of Christian legends. Saint George himself, apparently he slayed a dragon. I can't even paintball and this man took down a biblical dragon. Revelation 22, it reads, And he seized the dragon, that ancient serpent who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. A thousand years? I feel like we needed more time than a thousand years. I don't know. What year is it again? We're due for a couple of dragons. Sleep in fear. Number nine, the second beast. Yeah, 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 I know. I'll get to the first one later. You know how we do it here on YouTube. You won't believe number four. Know what I mean? Revelation 13, 11. Then I saw another beast rising out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb and it spoke like a dragon, causing fire to come down from heaven to the earth in full view of the people. So there were a lot of witnesses. I'm sure that was quite jarring for every party involved. Also, it causes everybody, both small and great, rich and poor alike, you'll be marked by this demon. You'll be marked on your right hand or your forehead so that no one can buy or sell from you unless, you know, they get rid of that mark. That's the name of the beast or the number of its name. Revelation 13, 16. Number eight, giants. Mentioned in Samuel 17, 158. And there came out from the camp a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits at a span. I'm six two, I don't know what that means, but that's pretty tall. He had a helmet of bronze on his head and he was armed with a coat of mail and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. Spoiler alert, Goliath fell to David, but there's a race of giants called the Amorites and well, they stepped in a bit. They're actually mentioned more than 80 times in the Bible. One description mentioned in Amos 2, 9, 10 paints quite the picture. Yet it was I who destroyed the Amorite before them, whose height was the height of the cedars, and he was as strong as the oaks. Yet I destroyed his fruit above and his roots beneath. Also it was I who brought you up from the land of Egypt and led you 40 years through the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorite. That is quite the description. If somebody were to describe me, they'd be like, ah yes, Taylor, the height of that bush and the strength also of that bush. Number seven. Four beasts of Daniel. Four beasts, that's a lot of beasts. It's like a four in one here. The first was like a lion and it had eagle wings. Quote, that as I watched, its wings were plucked off and I was lifted up from the ground and made to stand on two feet like a human being. And a human mind was then given to it. Daniel 7, 4. Yeah, that sounds like a pretty intimidating thing to see. These entities are described as a lion with eagle wings and there's also a bear, there's also a leopard and this fourth beast that's still a complete mystery. So there you go, fill in the blanks yourself. The bear has three ribs in its mouth also between its teeth. It's very scary to look at. The leopard also has wings as well as four heads. So it's like eight beasts in total. It's like eight, we got like 13 now. How many heads are we counting here? Heads or bodies? Like how are we counting them? The mysterious fourth beast is apparently full of horns and it's got iron teeth and 10 horns protruding out from it. So it's full of horns and it's got more horns. All the horns. The beast symbolizes the great four kingdoms, but the ribs and the teeth thing, that's gonna be in my head rent free. That's really scary. Number six, the Nephilim. The Nephilim are demigods. They were described, of course, as being gigantic in size, and in Genesis 6, 1, 4, they're mentioned as such. When people began to multiply on the face of the ground, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that they were fair, and they took wives for themselves of all that they had chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in immortals forever, for they are flesh. Their days shall be 100 120 years. Again, awfully high, maybe 80s, that's okay with me. 120, I don't want to limp to my death. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterwards when the sons of God went into the daughters of humans who bore children to them. So these sons of God, these fallen ones, many believe are not the greatest. They're fallen sons like Lucifer, that kind of thing, you know what I mean? Number 1333, there's a passage that says, and there we saw the Nephilim and we seemed to ourselves like grasshoppers. And so we seemed to them. Yeah, giants were grasshoppers, with Lucifer in the picture, no thanks. I've never felt smaller, if I'm being honest, or scared. Number five, the Leviathan. Isaiah 27, one, quote, In that day the Lord will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, with his fierce and great and mighty sword. Even Leviathan, the twisted serpent, and he will kill the dragon who lives in the sea. Yeah, we're talking about sea monsters now. This one has more than one head, again, as do most on this list. The Leviathan is a beast of chaos, specifically. It was defeated at the hands of God, and once upon a time, Sir Humphrey Gilbert saw a beast in the sea that had a lion's head. What do you know, could it be? Many biblical verses mention said Leviathan. I will not fail to speak of Leviathan's limbs, 
its strength and its graceful form. Who can penetrate its double coat of armor? Who dares open the doors of its mouth, ringed about with fearsome teeth? Its back has rows of shields tightly sealed together. Yeah, if this was a boss in Zelda, I wouldn't win this battle. This is a hard, I've never heard something described so fiercely in my entire life. Number four. The first beast, welcome, told you we'd do it. Number four, you won't believe it, let's do it. We talked about the second beast, so, you know, in Quentin Tarantino fashion, we gotta do the first one afterwards, get you caught up. The first one, literally, the first beast, is referred to in Revelation 13, 1, 2. And I stood upon the sands of the sea, and I saw a beast rise out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. There's actually two of these monsters. This one has seven heads and ten horns. This beast was once a great king, but before it could rule, it was cast into perdition. There's many who believe that this first beast is a literal antichrist. Number three, vampires. Remember when Edward said to Bella in the woods, say it. And then she's like, vampire. That and Robin Williams Jack both really emotional on the soul. Well, it turns out vampires were real. Vampires were mentioned in around 50 verses from the Bible. Now, of course, this is an ongoing argument because, well, obviously, we want to know if they're real, but the verse goes as such. There are those whose teeth are swords, whose fangs are knives, and they're to devour the poor from the earth, the needy from among mankind. Now, many believe, of course, it's not actual <sighs> capes floating and turning into a bat vampire, and rather just the wealth of the people that's being devoured, you know. But I don't know, sea monsters, locusts, multiple heads with multiple horns, I don't know. It sounds like vampires would be the least of our concerns. Number two, plagues. We grew up studying medieval plagues, but did we ever imagine that we'd live through one like we did the past few years? Who could have predicted any of that? Why the Bible? Of course, it was there all along. That's why we're here, right? Does it hold any clues to our impending doom? Has it been right before? Revelation 6 and Matthew 24 both foresee this pandemic hitting before the return of one Jesus Christ so I don't know maybe there's a silver lining and he's got an excellent beard he's he's due to arrive any minute now and finally number one locusts we saw these in 2016 just floating about god that was terrifying this is revelation 9 3 10 the bible is home to some strange events otherwise you know terrifying and then from the smoke came locusts on the earth and they were given power like the power of scorpions of the earth they were allowed to torment them for five months but not to kill them and their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings someone in appearance the locusts were like horses prepared for battle on their heads were what looked like crowns of gold and their faces were like human faces well, that's terrifying. That's a scary, scary passage. I'm not coming for your beliefs in any way, shape, or form in this entire video, but that is jarring to imagine. Don't sin or you'll get locusts with human faces sent to fly your way. Awesome. Among the 10 plagues in the Bible, this one sounds like it's perhaps the worst because, well, I don't like bugs. Five months of torment caused by pit locusts. This could happen. I'm not trying to alarm anybody, but back in 2016, locusts covered over 270,000 square miles in Russia. Just out of nowhere, just hundreds of thousands thousands of locusts. Now, none of them had human faces, but it still sucked nonetheless. Give this video a like and maybe we'll be good on locusts and, you know, good vibes all around. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters. Keep being you and we'll see you next time. Most amazing top 10. Bye.